I am about seven years. Yeah, I'm about seven years late on this series, but what better late than ever, you know? Okay, you guys see the title of today's video. You guys know what this video is about today. I am finally reading the selection series. Well, I guess I should say the first three books in the selection series because the other three, which is Happily Ever After, Air, and Crown, are not about like the people. Like the, it's it, it's not really like follow, directly following these. So not really gonna read them. I'm just gonna read these three. So obviously we start with the selection, but before we even get into any of the reading vlog, which I've been trying to film more of because you guys said that you guys wanted more reading vlogs. So there's a few of those actually coming out this month, like multiple. And I usually never make reading vlogs because I talk a lot and I feel like no one wants to hear me talk, but you guys actually really like them. So this will be a full spoiler reading vlog. So if you guys have not read the selection series and want to read it with no spoilers, click off the video. You do not have to watch this. You do not have to spoil these for yourself. If you want to read them in the future with no spoilers, then completely click off this video because since this series is A, old, B, a lot of people have read this series and have asked me to read the series. I do feel that since there's a big audience of people who have read it and grew up reading it that it can be a spoiler reading vlog. I know that this and the It Ends With Us reading vlog were spoiler reading vlogs but the rest of them will not be for this month I'm pretty sure. This is your warning. There are spoilers. There are spoilers so click off if you don't want any. Uh hi for those of you who have either read the selection series or just don't care. Hey nice to have you you know either way. Um but we are going to that's what I'm going to be reading today. I'm going to be reading all three of them hopefully tonight. It's like five o'clock right now or six o'clock something like that and these books are YA so they're very easy to get through and they're not very long so I feel like I can read them all tonight. So obviously we start with the selection which is the first book i kind of want to read like the intro i kind of want to read them introducing the selection and all of that before i update anything so i'm gonna try to like get through the introduction of this and then tell you guys my thoughts thus far first of all i just want to say that the lighting is so freaking bad over here because i the light above me is out so this is very like orange and yellow because that's like the hue. I'm on chapter seven. So we've gotten through all of the like backstory and the selection, like the actual selection, like them, her getting told that she's gonna be in the selection. Here are my thoughts. Her mom is rubbing me the wrong way, as is Aspen, as is this whole entire selection thing, because one, her mom, her mom does not care about like her happiness at all and doesn't care about like what she wants for her own life. Like I feel like the mom is like knows that America, which side note, I literally thought her name was American Singer. Her name's America Singer. Like I was like, her name's American Singer? American singer and songwriter? Like, what is going on? Not gonna judge. Anyway, she knows that America is beautiful and like can sing. And so she thinks that she would be perfect for the selection and get picked, which I mean, she does get picked. It just, it's just, it makes me feel bad because it's like her mom doesn't really care about her and like what she wants for her own life. Her mom just kind of cares about like the status and the money that they could have if she goes into the selection and if she wins. Aspen is like, completely in love with her one minute which i mean he still loves her but then he's like no i don't want to date you anymore like we need to be over because like they have to date in secret because of like the whole entire like casts thing i mean not really like in secret but like they 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 don't tell anybody because she's a she a four and he's a six so like the lower the number the lower you are like economically he kind of has this guilt he she's never she's not going to sign up for the selection and then he tells her sign up for the selection she thinks that he's going to propose she only does the selection for him she doesn't think she's going to get picked and then he breaks up with her right before the selection then she gets picked and he shows up at her house and helps her pack and she gets really mad at him rightfully so and one of my favorite quotes so since he's like a lower cast than her if he like does work he has to take the money, I guess. And so she like gives him all of the money that she saved up for them and their life. And he's like, I'm not taking this. And she goes, and she says, the hell you are. I don't need it. And you do. If you ever love me at all, you'll take it. Hasn't your pride done enough for us? 
because she expressed to Aspen, I don't know how many times, that she literally doesn't care about money. She doesn't care about any material things. She just loves him and wants to be with him. And then he made a decision for them. Like, I hate the trope in books when it's like, you deserve better than me, so I'm breaking up. It's like, no, no. Like, if I want to be with you, I'm going to be with you. I don't care about any of that other stuff. Like, I am literally telling you that I want to be with you, and you're putting these thoughts onto me that I care about anything else except us being together. Like, when I'm literally verbally telling you that I don't care about the money, I don't care about anything, and then you're literally forcing this on me, like, you're putting words in my mouth, and it's just, like, I hate that trope with guys. About the whole entire selection, like, the rules that you have to, the rules that you cannot deny or you shouldn't, like, they're not, like, saying, like, you can not but they're like I highly suggest that you do not deny anything Prince Maxon wants to do like if he wants to go on dates with you or if he wants to kiss you like okay so consent is out of the window with this that's a little much I feel and it's making me feel icky you know I'm on chapter 9 now they like got seen off and they were at the airport and she meets Maggie Celeste and Ashley and Maggie's like super sweet and just like hugs and rainbows and butterflies. Ashley's like really proper and Celeste is just a raging. <laughs> and I'm just, I infinitely get annoyed by those characters that get introduced and they're just like rude. Do you think that that attitude's gonna win you a princess spot? I don't think so. Aspen was at the send off with another girl from his cast. I just feel like when guys do that, it just like seals the deal for me. Like we're done. Why are we acting like we're literally like 14 years old? Like why are we doing this? <sighs> America has been very likable to me before chapter 10. <laughs> I do want to preface by saying, I understand heartbreak is like a very, you know, sad, strong thing. She meets Prince Maxon because when she's unpacking and she sees the jar that she brought with her of the pennies that she always got from Aspen, she like has a panic attack and wants to go outside in the fresh air and the guards are like manhandling her and Prince Maxon sees this and he tells them to unhand her and let her go out into the garden and then he comes to her and he's trying to talk to her and he's literally being nothing but nice and respectful he like calls her dear just as a term of endearment and she like freaks out on him for like calling her dear which i understand like if you don't want to be called the name like you have every right to be like please don't call me that but he, he didn't have like cruel intentions and he wasn't trying to be like weird he's just like trying to make conversation with her like calm her down and she's just being like so rude and snobby the whole entire time just so uncalled for she was just like so rude and then he was even trying to be nice after this and she is literally yelling at him and then he's like oh well i can tell the guards that you like prefer going out to the garden at night that way there will always be a guard that to keep you safe like you can go out into the garden and she's like no <laughs> I'm like, girl, he is literally just trying to, like, be accompanying to you. He goes to leave, and he's like, just don't tell anybody about this. You know, I don't want the other girls getting upset, even though you yelling at me isn't necessarily romantic. And she's like, not at all. I'm like, he's literally just trying to be nice to you. And she's like, I don't want you. Okay, let's see where that opinion stands at the end of this book. Mm, I feel so bad. Why do I love Maxon? Like, why is he so sweet? He's literally a gentleman. Did this little, like, wager in front of everyone at breakfast because she was eating, like, this pastry and he was asking her questions in front of literally all of the girls and the king and queen. And she was like, oh, yeah, like, this is so good. Like, my sister would literally cry, like, eating these because she would think that they're so good. And he's like, do you want to place a bet on it? Like, why do I think that they're British? I don't know. And then she's like, yeah, I do. If I win, I get to wear pants once a week. And he was like, well, if I win, you have to take a stroll with me on tomorrow at five. He sends three boxes full of these pastries and she's able to write a letter home and he lets all the other girls write letters home too. Like he's just so thoughtful in that sense, like knowing that they want to communicate with their family. Like I know it's the bare minimum, but still. Her sister doesn't cry so she has to go on this walk with him and then the walk is like going so well. They're like really hitting it off. Like I feel the chemistry between them. Like you can tell that he likes her and that she like, I think that she genuinely like doesn't really feel anything for him right now, but I can tell that he really likes her and he's like trying to like put on his charm for her. 
Yeah. They like move away from like the cameras and stuff and she gets scared. Like he doesn't even really like make a move. She he doesn't even make a move and then she knees him. <laughs> Right where the sun don't shine, and he is like, You crazy guy, what are you doing? Sorry, that one wasn't very good. And then he gets upset with her, obviously. I mean, but I understand because she like is fearful of that situation, even though he would never do that. And he was like, I would never do that. And he tells her, You have to eat dinner in your room alone tonight. You cannot have dinner with the rest of us. And she like knows and she thinks she's gonna get sent home. But he literally had a box delivered as soon as they went on their walk. And listen, you ask for such simple things. I can't deny you, but for my sake, only on Saturdays, please. Thank you for your company, your friend, Maxon. He literally had her pants delivered and was like, please only on Saturdays, love. Like he didn't say love, but because why am I swooning? And why am I using the word swoon? <laughs> Why am I so whatever like so I think it's like a broadcast like so literally imagine you're like watching The Bachelor because like they're doing this but also like they have like a television show what is it on like CBS or something so imagine CBS is filming this whole thing and literally making the show The Bachelor also Charlie hears me speaking Charlie will be downstairs and if she hears me speaking she runs upstairs do not lick my blueberries what is wrong with you they're interviewing Max and, and asking about the process thus far oh well let me tell you one of them had the nerve to yell at me rather forcefully the first time we met. I was given a very severe scolding. And then he goes, so she's still with us then? Oh yes, she's still here. And I plan on keeping her here for quite a while. Oh my god. They did like a little like another TV interview segment thing. Okay, just so she can be more comfortable, I guess. We'll do that. Okay. They did another little like TV segment thing. And everyone, like, America's thing was, like, the blue dress, simple, very simple jewelry, not a lot of jewelry. Literally, everyone, because everyone can tell that she's Maxon's favorite, every single girl wanted a blue dress. Like, every single girl got a blue dress, and her maids pulled through, and they were like, we got you this stunning, they were like, we made you this stunning red dress that you're going to wear. And she was like, I don't want to bring attention to myself. And they were like, girl wear it like you're gonna look beautiful and then she showed up and everyone was like so jealous they were all looking at her and everyone was like she looks so beautiful and then celeste like the audacity of celeste she like looks at her and she starts trying to take off celeste takes off her own dress and looks at america and goes give me your dress like i'm gonna wear your dress excuse me and then digs her nails into america and rips her sleeve that would have been it would have been a tussle it would have been a tussle america does not tell maxon this like i feel like she should have told maxon like i said you can just tell that like maxon really really likes america and she like says really nice things about him and like the little interview thing and then he comes to her room and he's like you know you didn't have to say that like you didn't have to go that far she's like oh no i was being truthful and then he kisses her and she's like what's going on and then he's like oh I thought you knew that I like liked you and I thought that you were starting to like me back and then she they end up like she ends up like kissing him back and they have a cute little moment and then he was like America I just want to ask you like is there a possibility and she's like yes Maxon there's a possibility I was like to add a little bit of drama Aspen is somehow a guard at the kingdom <laughs> is that what you call it he is a god at the palace maxon and america are out on one of their strolls and she sees him and she doesn't tell maxon who he is even though she has told maxon about her boyfriend but she doesn't tell maxon that that boyfriend is aspen who is now the new guard and she just tells maxon like oh yeah he was like back at my hometown and then so maxon goes oh this is so great like he can be your new guard and i'm just like I am so conflicted because one, I am mad at Maxon because America. So this other girl, Chris, it was her birthday. And of course, Maxon being the king, I'm just kidding, but being the nice boy that he is, was like, let's throw you a party and you know, whatever. And she got on this like pretty white dress and Celeste spilled punch, red punch all down the front of the girl's dress on purpose. And then America and Maxon are like walking the next day and she's trying to tell Maxon that like Celeste is a very bad person and Celeste isn't very nice. And he's like not listening to her and he's like, okay, I'm not talking about this. And she's like, she tried to rip the dress off of me and he literally doesn't even care. Like he's like, I'm done talking about it. Be so for all. Queen America literally looks all of the maids because like the maids usually have to go to like somewhere else that's less safe when 
they're under attack she makes her maids go with her and then when people try to object she silences them and she is there for her girls like she is like a one since day one but america is playing games because she's literally like talking aspen on the side like and it's literally because she's getting jealous like, of him like spending time with other girls i'm like this is literally what the competition is like he can't just spend time with you like he has to spend time with these other girls even though it's stupid but it's like but you're not showing him that you're all in so why would he put all of his eggs in your basket whenever you're over here talking to aspen hair is up like this th this doesn't look attractive like i get that but um we're night mode in i don't know now if i'm gonna finish all the last two of these books because I'm already feeling tired. Okay, but my teeth are brushed. My skin is moisturized. I'm feeling good. Starting the Elite also has the non-removable sticker. Let's see what the first line is. The Angelus air was quiet and for a while I lay still listening to the sound of Maxon's breathing. And the Angelus. So like, I know, I think this is like supposed to take place in like dystopian America. Her name is America. But it's supposed to take place in like dystopian United States. And like, I think she lives in like one of the Carolinas so does that mean like the capital is in Los Angeles I am so annoyed because I'm on chapter 9 almost 100 pages in and America is being so freaking mm. I hate the love triangle trope I hate it because there's always like one super specific guy that stands out and like i just always feel like the other guy is there just for drama like the only love triangle that i have read and actually not minded was the love triangle that's in the inheritance games trilogy like that one didn't feel as obvious i mean it felt obvious for me in the third book like who she was going to be with but it didn't feel obvious like in the other two i just hate the love triangle trope i just don't understand why they couldn't have introduced aspen in the beginning then he breaks up with him and then she finds maxon and her and maxon are happy it's just like it's adding so much unnecessary drama because maxon is literally taking her to these secret rooms getting her these secret diaries that no one's supposed to read teaching her about halloween throwing a halloween party for her going and talking to her dad and basically asking for her hand in marriage for whenever she is ready because he wants to marry her and he wants to eliminate all the girls and like be with her and she's like oh Maxon and then she's dancing with Aspen leading Aspen on talking about Aspen It's genuinely making me angry because he's literally like Maxon is over here offering her everything and she's doing him so dirty Okay, America is actually making me so mad because literally Maxon is trying to do everything to like make it where her life is like the way he, she would want it to be she is literally just fighting him on everything marley and one of the uh, other like guards i could tell that there's something going on with them but then for a second i thought maybe she had something going on with aspen i don't know they got like marley's hands were like i don't know like whatever they got punished in public it was either them getting punished like that or them getting killed and maxim refused to kill them so he like they had to do that which it's so stupid that like you get a punishment for like being with someone else whatever but like america like took everything out on maxon when he is like the prince like he really can't do anything you know america tried to split it up and then celeste started running her mouth and called marley a whore and then america america put the hammer down on celeste just grip and she deserved it period maxon goes in there and he is being so annoying though like with celeste like not holding celeste accountable america's like blaming everything on maxon when it's literally like girl he's doing everything in his power to make you feel comfortable and you were just straight up like ugh. she the character development is really going downhill maxon literally he kept on telling america like please just like stick with me because i have something for you like just wait and then he brings up Marley because they were, Marley and the, I think his name's Carter, were both supposed to be sent away. Instead, he had them like change their looks and they work in the palace and he had them, you know, like change their looks. That way people don't know that it's them. And he sent two other people in their place that had family like where they were supposed to go. And Marley told America that like he did everything in his power to like make it the best situation they could. And he had Marley and Carter get married because they they wanted to get married and he is the one that like sent marley off like you know like how the dad does that he did that for marley it's just like it's really annoying me at this point like i want 
want the love triangle to be done. Like, it's so overplayed. It's so annoying. Maxon does so much for her. And I feel like America is not giving, like, he's giving so much energy and so much for her. And she's, like, giving nothing. Okay, so much stuff is just happening. America saw Maxon and Celeste. This is the one person that I would never, ever want you to, like, be with. Well, and she's like, you're sitting here telling me you want to propose to me and you're over here with Celeste. Like, what? And then she gets mad and then Maxon's, like, trying to explain himself. But it's like, how can you even explain yourself? I mean, maybe explain himself in the next chapter. But then she's telling him, like, no, I just want to go home. But the thing about America that is so annoying to me is just how she throws bits about everything and doesn't let anybody get in a word like she does that with literally everybody like we'll just throw a fit and then she's like whatever since i'm going home I'm going out with a bang i'm like oh great we're about to make terrible decisions awesome i just wasted the past i don't know how many hours of my life so here was the dilemma we are reading the selection it's interesting i'm liking all the characters i'm liking the drama i'm thinking that this is fun exciting i'm like okay cool let's go into the second book second book i felt like all of the character relationships all of the character development went out the window and it was like kind of uninteresting at some points but my biggest problem with this is that it was like everything that we had done with Maxon and America had felt erased and like we were starting all over and now all of a sudden Maxon doesn't want to be with America like he wanted to be with America the whole time but then again this dude was over here Court and Chris like she was you know whatever then we go to the one and then all of a sudden in, in the beginning of this book America's character does a complete 180 she doesn't act at all how her character has been acting literally throughout the whole entire series and i was like what is going on we're still like having troubles like communicating and being with each other and i'm like we are literally in the third book and he's like full on low-key like in love with chris i'm sorry but like no one no one is going to convince me that this man was not low-key in love with chris it really like made me so disconnected and also i thought that this book was boring and then they just killed off like literally so many people and then like the line that everyone talks about in this book where it's like break my heart break it a thousand times it was only ever yours to break anyway i'm like oh my god it wasn't like if this book was better i would have ate that quote up but i didn't because this book was not good overall consensus i wasted my time and if i were to rate this series as a whole i would rate it a two stars that being said i definitely think there's kind of an unfairness when it comes to rating this because i am literally almost 20 years old reading something that was definitely targeted for like 12 and 13 year olds so like you know i'm kind of missing the mark there. I'm so tired. Can you tell? Can you tell? I think that I would rate the selection a three stars because I enjoyed it. I read the whole entire thing. Well, I read all of these books. I'm saying like I enjoyed like the whole entire thing. It was keeping my attention. I thought that the drama and stuff was pretty interesting. So and then we go to the elite. I would definitely rate. I would rate the elite a two and a half stars just because there it was like still kind of whatever. But honestly, actually no. I'm going to rate the elite a two stars because I was very, 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 very upset with the like love triangle in this book. It just didn't make any sense to me. Like the whole entire time that I'm reading it, I'm like, it doesn't make any sense because I get that she has like passed with Aspen, but like I didn't even feel anything there with them. Like I felt like she was just scared of committing herself to being a princess and stuff with Maxon. So she just like kept on going back to like her old relationship instead of growing into something new. And then we have the one which... Ironically enough, I would rate a one star. This was not good at all to me. Oh my god, I was literally struggling on the struggle bus to finish this book. That's why I really didn't even do any updates for this book. If you guys enjoyed it, if you did, you guys know to do like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff that you guys know how to do. And I will see you guys when I see ya. Peace.